I'm David Wasson with CAPS, manufacturer of the Herc 30-ton vertical package unit. This machine is designed for return or outside air application, has 60 kW heat, and furnishes 10,000 CFM. This video is going to go through the setup, startup, and operation of the 30-ton Herc vertical package unit. To transport the 30-ton vertical package unit, there's two sets of forklift pockets, one on the long side here and one on the short side. The machine can be moved from either direction to provide improved movability. Please note that the weight tag is in the bottom on the channel frame here and ensure that the forklift that's being used to move the machine is rated for that capacity. One last item is over top here is some straps, guys, and this is intended for when the machine is being hauled to strap the machine down to a uh, truck trailer. Now that we've got our unit set in place on a stable level surface, the next thing we want to do is just double check our power requirements. You go to the CAPS data tag here, it'll indicate that the minimum circuit ampacity is 98 amps and the maximum overcurrent protection is 110 amps. This is important when hooking to a customer's power supply or sizing a generator. Now that we've verified our power requirements, we're ready to connect the electrical main power to the machine. We're simply going to remove the protective dust and water caps here. Please note that you always connect the ground first and then follow sequence with it. As we finish connecting the power up, we're going to go to our, our main power source and remove the lock and tag out and may energize the unit to check the phase and verify that it's correct. We've energized our main power feed. Now we have a local breaker here. We're going to open the, close the breaker. That starts it up. Now notice here that we have a power light which is illuminated, but we also have a phase incorrect light that's on. This indicates that two of our phases are not properly phased. So we're going to disconnect the power at the main breaker here. We're going to lock and tag out our main power source and reverse two cables. Please note that you never change the cam locks with the power feed being live. Okay, we've reversed two of our phases. We've unlocked, uh, removed the lock and tag out of our main power supply. Now we're going to energize our main breaker at the unit. We have a clear power light and we have no phase incorrect light. The machine's now ready to start. The next step in our setup of our 30-ton vertical package unit is to determine what we're going to do with the condensate, which is the water that's made from the air conditioner. You have two options. The bottom connection here, which is equipped with a hose thread, is a gravity drain. Simply drain on the ground or be connected to a hose. The second one is called a pump drain. The unit has an integra integrated condensate pump that automatically operates on a float meaning that the, the condensate can be pumped to a, to a remote location. The 30-ton vertical package unit has four intake ducts, which are two are located here and two are here. We're going to demonstrate hooking up the, the ductwork, and this is the two outlets, the two supplies. So you simply open the Jeep latch up here, open the friction clamps up, pull the pin, we'll open that up, now, the intake, the direction of air is going this way. You want to make sure that your duct arrow is facing the direction of the unit. That's the intake. I'm going to start on this side where the outlet is. Again, pull the pin. Now, I'm going to hook my duct up and go in the opposite direction, which is right here. You're simply just going to roll the duct onto the clamp, open the friction clamps up, roll it on, the, on there, lock it down, and you'll pull the duct down to the condition area you're ready to go to. Now, you're, now your duct's hooked up and ready for the condition space. Okay, to recap where we're at now setting up the 30-ton vertical package unit, we've set it on a stable plumb level surface. We've hooked up the main high voltage power and we've verified the phase. We've determined how we're going to collect the condensate utilizing the condensate pump and we've connected our ductwork. The next point is to start up the machine. 
Now that we've completed the setup with the high voltage, we no longer need our hot gloves. We're going to go through the controls here just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at. Pretty self-explanatory. you got your main power light here, which is illuminated currently. we got our phase incorrect light, which is off, which indicates that our phase is correct. We have an hour meter for each compressor, noting the number of hours. And then we have a cool indicator light as each stage of cooling comes on, and there's two stages, one here and one here. Then anytime the heat is operational, the heat light's on. Down here is our master system switch. This is our selector switch, whether we want to control the unit based on entering air, which would be a typical return air installation, or leaving air if we were drawing in 100% outside air. Here's the condensate pump switch, and you can turn it on and off should you elect to uh, pump the condensate. Then behind the control panel here, the, the weather enclosure, we've got the th main thermostat that controls the unit, the potentiometer, which var varies the speed of the indoor blower airflow, and then the 6040 controller, which is only used in leaving air control. Okay, now we're ready to start the unit. First thing you're gonna do is just turn the main system switch to on. That'll power up the thermostat. Next step we want to do is determine whether we want to do entering air control. Anytime you're in entering air control, the unit is controlled off of this thermostat. Anytime you're in leaving air control, the machine is, varies the variable speed drive and is off of the 6040 controller. We're also going to utilize the condensate pump, so we're going to turn that switch on. That's an automatic function. Typical installation will be entering air temperature, and anytime it's an entering air, we have the ability to adjust the airflow right here off of this potentiometer. By turning it clockwise speeds it up, counterclockwise slows it down. Most installations will be at probably maximum airflow here. Once I've got the fan up and turned up and running here, the thermostat now is operational and we'll go through the set point sequence cooling mode is operating now. It says occupied, the room temperature 78 degrees, and our system mode is cool. If you want to change it to heating, we simply push the mode button. Temperature set point, yes or no. No, we don't want to change the temperature. System mode, yes or no. Yes, we want to change the mode. Use the arrow, move it down to heat. There it is, and you say yes. You want to exit, say yes. Now the room temperature is 78 degrees. So now to change the temperature, you're going to push the menu button. Temperature set point, yes or no, yes. Cooling set point, no, I don't want to change it. Heating, yes. And it's set at 68 degrees. You can hold the button up. And that'll be rapid. Or you can go slow. This will be rapid. That's 90 degrees. Say yes. Fahrenheit Celsius, say no. Exit, say yes. Now the room temperature, 77.5. We set it for 90. Now the heating is engaging. We've been operating the machine and entering air control, working off the thermostat. Should you have an application where you want to do leaving air control, which will vary the evaporator airflow, you simply roll the switch over to leaving air control, come up to the 6040 controller, and you'll lower it. Right now it's set at 85. You lower that set point, you can hold it for rapid, or you can push it individually, and you set it for 50 degrees, that will vary and this becomes deactivated, your potentiometer does. So now the, the con temperature controller has taken over the control of the evaporator fan to provide 50 degree air. The lower the air temperature here, the lower the air flow, the higher this temperature, the higher the air flow. Typical installation is usually in entering air off of the thermostat. Even though we have the unit in leaving air control now and we have it set at 50 degrees, the main thermostat still has control of the machine and currently is set at 70 degrees. So once the entering air temperature drops to 70, it'll de-energize the cooling and be prepared to do another startup cycle.